This is Movie Tone. Jeffrey Sumner reporting. Almost zero hour at Cape Canaveral, and enlarged 16 millimeter pictures show a monkey specially trained and conditioned for voyaging in space. Two monkeys had been selected for the job. They called them Abel and Baker, A and B, of course. Each one, carefully space-suited, was placed in a small compartment in the nose cone of a Jupiter missile. And now they're off. It's a 1,500-mile journey, reaching a height of 300 miles and a speed of 10,000 miles an hour. Here in diagram is how the stages of separating the nose cone from the missile work out. It all looks simple enough, and if you'd like a view from the nose cone itself, here's the real thing. You're right there, looking back at the world. Back to a diagram again as the flying monkey house automatically releases a parachute. After a quarter of an hour's trip, a gentle descent into the sea. Radio signals at once send out a message to the rescue teams standing by. In fact, the monkeys came down safely near Antigua. Reported none the worse. After blazing the trail for human space travel. before men. That's the big idea. And they selected Sally, Amy and Mo to make the trip. Amy is saddled with an instrument to record her reactions during the space flight. They were placed in a miniature version of the sort of capsule that would be used for a man. The nose cone of an Atlas missile was to be the carrier. The point of departure was at Lake Canaveral in Florida. And now the time had come for the blast off. This is it, said the mice. And up towards the dangerous radiation belt at 18,000 miles an hour. 700 miles up. But whether the moon's made of green cheese, those mice still don't know. 5,000 miles away in the South Atlantic, they found the one and a half ton nose cone soon after the 25 minute flight was over. It was right on target and had survived the intense heat of re entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Accuracy of landing and safe re entry were two of the objects of the exercise. Another, of course, was to learn whether the mice would survive. And the question now was, how about Sally, Amy and Mo? They'd spent 10 minutes in a state of weightlessness, but weeks must elapse before it would be known precisely how they stood the trip. But the first living creatures to return to Earth from such a distance certainly seemed to be all right. One day, man will follow those mice into space. <laughs> Meet the chimp who made history. His name's Ham, and his epic journey began at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Months of training had prepared him not only to feel at ease in his space capsule, but also to operate a series of buttons to control his own comfort and to relay information back to base. A redstone rocket was used to carry him out of the Earth's atmosphere. And so the first stage begins. We might call it Ham and Exit. The best laid plans of mice, men and monkeys often go astray, and in this case the boosters carried the rocket further than they should. Here in diagram, the capsule separates. It took Ham a thousand miles an hour faster than anticipated, rocketing him 155 miles up, paving the way for humans who will someday follow. Down the space range he drifted, parachuting 130 miles beyond the scheduled landing zone. Consequently, he was in the Atlantic longer than expected. Rescue vessels rushed to the scene while a helicopter retrieved Ham's capsule, leaking slightly after impact. Our intrepid hero had done everything he should, performing his task perfectly. And the question everyone now asked in these exciting moments was how had he survived it? First reports were soon confirmed by the doctors. The astro chimp seemed none the worse, except for a bruise on his nose. 
He just said, howdy, man. Like I said, man, this space travel sure sends you. 